excellence in diversity, equity, and inclusion for the Culture Club. KUAM News Headlines are presented by Calvo's Insurance, a legacy of trust. Serving Micronesia since 1938, Matson celebrating 25 years of commitment to Guam, Micronesia, and the CNMI. Cars Plus, Guam's leader in sustainability and electric vehicles. Learn more at carsplusguam.com. McDonald's of Guam, I'm loving it, and King's Restaurant, serving your local breakfast, lunch, and dinner favorites for over 45 years. A close tie to Guam, the investigation into the FBI's seizing of classified documents at former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate now includes a man who once called Guam home. Plus, a man on trial for attempted murder in connection to a Dededo shooting is cleared of all charges, a jury returning with a verdict today. And a lifer convicted in a murder and robbery more than 30 years ago is denied his request to get out of federal prison. Half a day and good evening, everyone. Welcome to Primetime this Friday, October 14th. I'm Mick Delgado. And I'm Hannah Devonzo. So great to have you wrapping up your week with us. Well, former Guam resident Walty Nelta is now a key person in a federal investigation into classified documents stored at former President Donald Trump's Mar-a-Lago estate. An article in The Guardian reports that Walty Nelta was seen on security footage moving boxes out of a storage room before and after the Justice Department issued a subpoena in May after allegedly being ordered to do so by President Trump. National media report that the Justice Department interviewed him several times. The Federal Elections Commission documents show Nalta on a list of disbursements by the former president's political action committee, Save America. KUAM has learned that Nauta, approximately 40 years old, is a former resident of Agate who left Guam several years ago to join the military in the States. He served as a former military aide before working at the White House as a chef for President Trump. KUAM has reached out to his attorney for comment. A man on trial for attempted murder is acquitted by a jury in the Superior Court of Guam. Jerome Camacho Cruz walked out of presiding Judge Alberto Lamarena's courtroom Friday afternoon a free man after the not guilty verdict was reached. Defense attorney Bryson Brizel and prosecutor Leonardo Rapadas react to the outcome. We're just happy that you know the jury uh, carefully considered the evidence in this case. Uh, we thought from the beginning that um, there wasn't enough evidence to convict Jerome of what he was charged with. So, you know, this is a difficult case, obviously for both sides. Um, it's difficult for Jerome too. Um, you know, he's waited for his day in court. So we're obviously happy that you know the jury weighed the evidence and uh, came back the way they did. Jurors, um, for whatever reason, they 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 want more evidence, and from the start, uh, we knew that. Uh, but there, this is a case that didn't have as much evidence that we would have liked. But, you know, we still go, we still go forward. In February of this year, Cruz was arrested following a fight outside of the alleged victim's Dededo home. The victim testified Monday that he had been shot during the incident. Well, a lifer convicted for his part of the killing of an airman back in the 90s has denied his request to get out on compassionate release. 53-year-old Dennis Santante Samoy was convicted of first-degree murder and robbery back in May of 92. He's currently being held at the U.S. Penitentiary in Pollock, Louisiana. Samoy asked District Court Chief Judge Francis Hedinko Gatewood to reduce his sentence to a more just term of imprisonment, adding he was younger at the time of the murder and is rehabilitated. Dennis Samoy, along with his brother, senior airman Jose Samoy, were convicted in the murder of Sergeant Stacy LeVay now 30 years ago. Jose Samoy was sentenced to death. Joseph Wolford was also convicted for his part in the robbery, Tadinko Gaywood, stating in her order that he should have thought of the consequences before robbing another of their life. The court noted during his time in prison, he was allegedly involved in a killing in 94 while locked up, was caught with numerous weapons and even tested positive several times for using meth. And the Social Security Administration has announced a huge 8.7% increase in benefits starting in January. It's the biggest jump in more than 40 years with the average monthly benefit going up by $140 starting in January. Nestor Lacanto reports. The Social Security Administration says federal benefit rates increase when the cost of living rises as measured by the Labor Department's Consumer Price Index. 
Approximately 70 million Americans will benefit from the 8.7 percent increase in cola, which is meant to offset the ever-increasing prices. We spoke with a few of the beneficiaries at the Senior Center in Tamuning. It's a good part of the Social Security that can be given to the, to the recipients. But the increase, as I said, is only this much, and the inflation is this much. It should be more. <laughs> it, it won't cover the inflation. I'm very happy that there will be increase for the Social Security. Do you guys need it? Yes. I wish that they didn't take so much for Medicare, but yeah. You think it will help you pay some bills? Uh, hopefully. It's probably going to be, what, about $80, $90 more? Um, uh, I think the average, they said, the average bill will increase by about $140? Oh, that much, huh? Well, that's good. Yeah, that'll help. It's special for, for uh, senior citizens and uh, retirees, especially for the maintenance, you know. Senior citizen needs maintenance of medicine. Cola notices that details specific new benefit amounts will be mailed out through the month of December to retirees, survivors, and disability recipients. The information will also be available online through personal My Social Security accounts. Supplemental Security Income or SSI benefits will also increase, but Guam residents are currently not eligible. For KUAM News, I'm Nestor Leconto. And former Judge Juan Lazama shared time on the bench with the current Northern Marianas Attorney General, Edward Manabusin. Now he's looking to take his job mounting a fierce campaign in a heated race to be the chief legal officer. Regional correspondent Tomas Manglotnia sat down with Lazama, who says more needs to be done to protect the Commonwealth and crack down on corruption. You gotta be uh, vocal, you gotta be explicit. So. You know, my observation the past eight years is that we don't have that. Former Judge Juan Lazama is mounting a fierce campaign against Sinai Attorney General Edward Manabusan. The AG, I think in a small community like this, it should be a limited uh, uh, position. You can't just continue on, uh, you know, uh, it's, it's too political. And, uh, and if you want to make it unlimited, then make it uh, bipartisan so people will know where your position is because then the people loses, loses opportunities. Lizama identifies as an independent. He says more needs to be done to protect the NMI's position as a commonwealth in local, state and federal matters. When it comes to recent criminal charges filed against Governor Ralph Torres, he says the timing wasn't right. The Attorney General's job is to vigilant on daily issues. You don't wait seven years, eight years to bring up a corruption uh, case. Lizama says he would appoint an assistant AG to audit conflicts in all branches of government in an effort to reduce corruption. But he also has his sights set on the bigger picture as a U.S. territory. What is relevant is what we, we are foreseeing in the future, where we stand as a political entity, as a commonwealth of the 